Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create this amazing monthly Gantt chart in Excel. Many people think that you need fancy software or to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on project management software in order to get this sort of Gantt chart, but you can actually create it in Excel with a little bit of your own ingenuity. This Excel monthly Gantt chart is absolutely fantastic. We've got quarters, so it's a dynamic calendar here that goes by the year, the quarter, and the month, which updates dynamically depending on the date. If we were to change this to June, then that's going to update. And it's always going to start at the beginning of the quarter, which is just such a really cool thing, slightly complex to do, but it's also going to update the progress on our Gantt chart bars as much as we want. If we want 50% there, and if we want to make this complete, it's going to give us a nice, beautiful yellow uh, cell at the end. And if it's blocked, then it's going to sh just highlight a little bit of an orange or a reddish color so that we can know to look into that particular feature or deliverable. This is gonna be a whole bunch of fun. And of course, it took me many, many days and weeks to create this template and figure it out as well as the other Gantt chart templates. So if you find that you don't want to be spending this time creating it yourself, you can get this and more than five other Gantt charts plus 50 other templates for your project management career in the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get into creating this monthly Gantt chart. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just general formatting and colors and borders to set up our Gantt chart and the way it looks. So if you want to skip over this, I will put another chapter in the video. But the first thing we're going to start with is just a nice gray line on line five. And we can just make that a light gray. You can have this uh, go as long as you want all the way to the end. For us, we're going to go to column CZ and that's going to give us plenty of room for our Gantt chart. Our first section is going to be our project start date and also our project name, just with a full colon. For both of these, in fact, for all of these, we're just going to put these in the middle, put them over to the right and increase the indent just a little bit. That way they look pretty nice. For our start date, we'll put this as any date, maybe just starting in June for our purposes here. And if we want to format this date, we click right click and go to format cells and our number custom, we're just going to have one D a dash three M's and two Y's. And that's just going to give us the format that we have here. Let's put this in the center. Our project name can be our amazing project number three. Let's put this one over to the left and increase the size a little bit. This can be italic, so it looks really nice. Let's make these two bold. Let's give our start color just a nice light blue and put a border all the way around this, maybe outside borders here. Okay, now we're starting to look pretty good. Now we want to put our number, the activity. We want who it's assigned to. We want the start date, the end date, the days that, the, that we're working on the item, the status of the item, and the percentage done for the particular item. Again, let's put these in the center, maybe increase the size and make them bold, just so they do stand out. For our numbers, we can just have one, two, and three down the side. And if we capture those two and three and drag them all the way down, they're going to increase those numbers We'll make those in the center and bold as well. Now I'm going to paste some, just some generic values here to, uh, so that we've got something to work with on our Gantt chart. Here are our activities. For our activities, let's put these over to the right hand side and increase the indent just a little bit. For our assignees, we can make them in the middle. And for our dates, again, if we select all of these, we're just going to right click and format and go to number, we're going to go to custom. And remember we want maybe just one D with a dash, three months or three M's and two Y's for our year. And that's what it's going to look like. You can change that to any format that you like, but that's the one that we've got there. Now the number of days that we're working on, let's select this column and we can go down as far as we like here. Uh, it's really up to you. We're going to make this a nice, just a, a nice dark green. There's the hex code 
for you if you need that one. And we'll make the text white. Now, how do we tell how many days we've been working on the item? I'll just increase the formula bar here. We're going to say if the end date is blank, then we want to return nothing or we want to return blank. But if it's not blank, then we're going to return the working days, or the network days, between the start and end date. Now, you could have just the days themselves. That will also work. That's going to include every single day. So it's really up to you which way you like to go. I'm going to use the working days for this particular one. Now let's control C to copy and go all the way down again. Select all of our uh, bar, all of our cells in this column. Right click and paste our formulas. Now it's going to paste all of the formulas so they all work. And we do want this to be in the center in the middle and maybe just a tiny little bit bigger or it's really up to you what the size that you want. Now that is working for us. Now we want the status. Let's select everything in this column, all the cells in this column and we're going to add a little drop down box here. We're going to go to data and we're going to go to data validation and data validation again. Now I, if you remember or what we want is to allow a list here and we can actually put that list uh, in the source section. And what we had was not started. We're going to put a comma. And I think the next one was in progress. And after that, it could have been blocked. Now you can add any other statuses that you like. Just make sure you've got a comma between each one. And complete was our last one. Let's click OK. And now we've got some beautiful drop down boxes here. So we can select any one we like. We're going to just paste that dummy data for ourselves. And again, we want this to be in the center or in the middle so that that looks a little bit better. If we select this column again, we're going to go to conditional formatting and go to manage rules and new rules because we just want to change, uh, change this if it says blocked, we just want to highlight that. So we're going to go only cells that contained, contain a specific text and we're just going to say blocked. Then we're going to format this, change the fill color maybe to just a light, a light orange perhaps. You can choose any color that you like there to highlight that. And we're going to click apply and now this shows as this highlights if uh, if it is blocked and we'll come back to that in a second when we do the rest of the Gantt chart calendar. But for now, the last part is our percentage done. Let's select this area again, all of the uh, cells in this column. Now we want this to be a percentage. So we're going to click the percentage style. And now when we put in 50% or 10% and it hasn't shown up, so we must have our uh, our, we just want to change the color of that text. Now that's better. And we'll put that in the middle again. Now it's starting to look even better again. But any number that we type in here is going to show as a percentage and that's exactly what we want. Now we're just going to put in some of the borders so that, uh, so that we've got something to work with. If we go to view and take out the grid lines, then you can see we haven't got much to work with currently. So let's add some borders in really quickly. Let's select all of this area again, all of our chart, all of our Gantt chart data. And if we go back to home, we can select our borders tool and go to more borders. And what we really want here is just a normal border. Uh, let's make it just uh, the second gray and just in between and at the bottom and at the top, all of those and maybe over on the right hand. Oh, let's leave it at that for now and click OK. Now we've got some lines to work with. Let's put one just onto the left here. Again, if we go to our borders tool, we can add this on the left hand side of, of those bunch of cells. And all right, that's starting to look good. I see that these just need to be made in the center. So let's put those in the center, starting to look a little bit better. Now we can start getting into our Gantt chart area. Let's select this gray bar, go all the way over to the right, and we want uh, borders on the bottom and on the top. So one there and one there. 
Let's click OK. All right, looking good. Now the same thing for our Gantt chart calendar. So we've got three cells here. Those, these are going to be our months for the quarter. So above that, we're just going to merge those three together. That's going to be the quarter itself with merge and center. And above that, we're going to merge those because that's going to be the year that we're working with. Now, if we select all of these together, we can add those borders at the same time. And we're going to add ones in between and on the edge and up above and in, and in between the other way as well. Click OK. And that is what we're working with. Now we can drag these all the way across and drag our months all the way across as well. For our months, let's make that gray and we'll make our years gray at the same time. Oh, with our years, actually, I think we're going to get rid of the borders in between here. So let's just get rid of those borders in between and click OK. All right, that's a little bit better for us to work with. Now, the final thing for our borders is to select all of our Gantt chart area all the way over to the right and all the way down the bottom. Just hold Shift when you click and that will select all of that area. Now, if we go back to our borders tool, we can start with a nice light border, I think, maybe a lighter gray. And we're going to click all of the outline and all of the inside. You see they're all selected there. Let's click OK. All right, now we've got our uh, calendar or Gantt chart area. Let's quickly select the top left cell and go to view. We're going to freeze the panes here so that every time we scroll down, we can still see our status. And every time we scroll across, we can still see all of this information here. Now it's time to get into the actual calendar area. Now this first part is a tiny bit complicated for a very, very good reason. Let's open up this formula bar and I'll just make some spaces to make it a little bit easier to read. Now what we're doing here with this formula is we're creating a new date based on our start date. And so this is where our calendar is going to start, but we want it to start at the beginning of the quarter and the beginning of the month so that we always have the full quarter when we're starting. Now, what that looks like is with our date formula, it, uh, we just want to find the year that we're working with. And so we're going to say we want the year of the start date. And then with the month, what we want is the lowest month in the quarter. So for every three months, we want the lowest month. So the first month of the quarter. And that's what this part of the formula is doing for us. And then finally, we just want the first day of the month. And so that's uh, day number one. Now, if we click enter for that, uh, it's not showing up. We just need to format this bar a little bit better. We're going to go to format cells. And we're going to, let's do the alignment. We're going to change this to 90 degrees. And the number, we want a custom. We just want three M's because we just want the month itself. And if we click OK, now you can see uh, it's, uh, it's starting in the month of April for the first month of the quarter. Let's quickly just align this in the center and in the middle. Now it's starting to look really, really good. We can go to home and select our format painter and just paint that formatting so that it's going to be the same whenever we, uh, whenever we move that to the right hand side. And now all we want to do is add one month every time it goes to the right. And to do that, we use a formula called edate. So edate oh, and we want the previous cell and then we want to add one month. And if we click enter, now we've got April and May. And if we drag that all the way across, you'll see that it adds one month every single time. Now we're just going to add the year very, very briefly. If we say up here equals, and it's going to be this particular cell, click enter. Now it's given us May. We just need to format this right click, format those cells. We want that to be four, four years or four Y's to give us the full year. And click OK, drag that one across. Now we've got all the years that we want to work with. 
Now, finally, for our quarters, this is what we're going to do. We're going to say if the month in the middle of our quarter uh, equals two, then it's quarter one or Q1. And you can change this text to anything you like. You can say the full quarter or just Q1, or you can change the quarter. It could be Q4 or Q3, depending on uh, if it's different, if it's a financial year for your country, for example. But for our purposes, let's keep it simple. Uh, if it's one, two, three, then we're going to say Q1. If it's four, five, six, it's Q2. If it's seven, eight, nine, we're going to go Q3. And up in November, that's Q4. And if it's not any of those, we're going to return nothing. So it's nice and empty and it keeps it nice and clean. If we click enter there, there we go. We've got Q2 and that's exactly what we want. We're going to make that bold. We're going to copy this with control C, select the rest of our rows, right click and click paste the formulas. And we also want to right click and paste the formatting, I think, so that that now appears as all of those quarters. Let's put that in the middle, make it bold, and it's starting to look better and better. Now let's do some dynamic colors on this Gantt chart calendar. Just quickly before we get into the actual Gantt chart itself, we'll select all of this, these quarters in the row, go to conditional formatting, manage our rules, and we just want every second quarter to be uh, a different color, maybe a nice blue, and we want that to be no matter when we start. So if we go to use a formula to determine which cells to format, and this is the formula that we want. If it's quarter one or quarter three, there is the formula if you do need that one. And what we're looking for is to format this and to change the fill. We're just going to make this maybe a, just a, a darkish blue or a light blue. You can change this to any color you like, of course. If we click OK and apply, now our quarters one and three are going to be uh, different colors no matter where we're starting. So if we're starting in quarter three, quarter three will still be a blue. So that is dynamic and we want to do the same thing for our years. If we select all of the years, all the year row, all the way here, just hold shift and click to the end. Go back to our conditional formatting and managing our rules. Let's make a new rule with a formula. And this one is very, very simple. We just want to change the color if it's an odd year. So nice and simple. If the year is odd and it's for L4 right in the middle of our quarter here, we are going to format this and let's change the color to white so that we've got gray and white and gray and white. And then if we click OK, fingers crossed this will work. We'll click apply. Now our years are differentiated as well. So if we change the date here to the 1st of February, for example, that's going to update dynamically and change. Those colors will always be up updated dynamically, which is really, really nice. Okay, now we're going to get into the Gantt chart bars themselves. And all we're going to do is select the top left hand corner of our Gantt chart, go to conditional formatting and manage those rules. Let's go to new rule, use a formula again. And this is the formula that we're going to use. If, uh, and at the same time, we want these two things. So it's and both of these things. And we always need it to equal the first of the month because our, gal our calendar up here is always on the first of the month, if you remember, because that's the way we made it. So if it's going to be greater than our start day, but the first day of the month of our start day month. And that's what this is doing here. It's just minusing the same number of days and then adding one. So it's the first day of the month for us, no matter when we start. And then we want it to be less than or equal to F6, which is our end date. And if it's in between those two dates, then we're going to make a nice color here, maybe just a light blue or a light aqua color. If we, and again, you can change the color for this uh, to anything that you like. Click OK and OK again. Now, if we apply this, you'll see that it only gives us our first bar here or our first cell. We actually need this to apply to uh, our entire sheet. So the applies to section. 
uh, if we put a full uh, a full colon here, and I think it was uh, C Z, wasn't it? it? Was right at the end. So C Z, and then another dollar sign. And how far down was it? I think it was about a hundred rows. So let's go C Z a hundred. I hope I've typed that incorrectly. If we uh, click apply, all right, that has worked, which is really really good. And so now we can see some Gantt chart bars and we're going to click OK there. Now the Gantt chart bars, you can see that the, the borders now don't show up very well. So just if we go back to conditional formatting and we edit this rule, I'm just going to change one thing with our formatting. We're going to go to our border and we just want, if our Gantt chart bars are there, let's make it a little bit of a darker gray and we're going to do it all the way around just the outline here click OK, click OK again and apply. OK, now we can see those Gantt chart bars plus the cells. So it's up to you what you want to do with those borders. You can add those or not. I'm just going to leave them there for now. Now let's look at the progress for our bars so, so that that progress shows up. If we go back to conditional formatting again, let's create a new rule. And the formula that we want to use this is the particular formula here. Now it's a little bit big actually, so I'll, I'll do this separately. But again, let's go to formatting and change the fill color. For our progress bars, we can make that a little bit of a darker, uh, darker blue. Click OK, click OK again, OK again. Make sure that we're applying it to all of our Gantt chart section and then click apply. Uh, and now look, same thing with the with these Gantt chart progress bars. I'm just going to go back into this and update the borders to be a lighter border now so that they show up. So going back in here, the border, let's choose our color as a lighter white. All of the borders around, click OK, OK again and apply. All right, see now it shows up and it's just a little bit nicer to look at. Again, you don't have to do it that way. Now, what was that progress formula that we were looking at? And here is what here is what it is. We can if we put it in our normal cell, we can see the cells that it's referring to, which is kind of nice. So, what we're saying is at the same time we want all these things to be true. So, it's and this and that and that. The first one is i6. So, we want the percentage to be greater than zero. So there's a percentage there. If there's no percentage, we don't want anything. And that's good. And then we want our date above here to be less than the start date plus the progress uh, of, of our entire bar. So the 50% progress. And that's what that is doing. And then we also want it to be, uh, if that date, if, our, if, it, if that date is greater than our start date. Now remembering that we need this to be the first day of the month because that's the way that we've set up all of these months. It's always going to be the first of the month so it needs to match it exactly and that's why we've got that minusing the day of the month that it is plus one so it's always the first day of the month. That's why it's a little bit of a longer formula but that is what we're looking at there. And it's really starting to look quite good now. In fact, I think the next thing that we're going to do is add a diamond for our milestone. And to do that, again, just remembering it's a bit more complicated because we're always starting on the first quarter uh, of the, at the start of the quarter and the first of the month. So it's going, it looks a lot better, but it is a tiny bit more complicated to set up. Now the formula, what we want is just in all of our cells here, but we'll start in the top left. If the month equals the end month or the start day of the end month and the year of this also equals the year. So it's not just all of the Januaries. Otherwise we're going to get all of the Januaries. We need the year to equal the same year as well and the month to equal the same month. If that is the case, then we're going to return a U. And if it's not the case, then we're going to return nothing at all. So again, that is the formula that we're going to use. And I'm just going to press enter. And you'll see that nothing comes up. So I'm going to select this cell, control C to copy. And then we're just going to select all of our Gantt chart area. 
Then I'm going to right click and click paste on our formulas, paste our formulas. And now we've got a whole bunch of U's at the end uh, of our bars. Let's put them in the middle and just make them bold perhaps, I think would be quite nice. But we don't really want U's. Now here is the trick. We go to our font and we select Wing Dings font. And that is what's going to give us these nice diamonds. We can make them smaller or larger, completely up to you. Uh, now the other trick here is it doesn't have to be a diamond. It can be anything you like. Use the Wingdings font or the Webdings font. If you do a search on the internet, you'll see some cheat sheets. So you can search for a Webdings or a Wingdings cheat sheet. And so just having a look, you could use circles here under Webdings would be an N or arrows under Wingdings 3 would be a U or a T. There are many different things. You could do a square if you really wanted to, or you could do, uh, I mean, many different options. So lots of icons that you can choose. And if you do a search, that is completely up to you. All right, now we want to just change the color if our bar is blocked, if you remember that. Let's select the top left hand again, conditional formatting, back to our conditional formatting area. And we're going to go to new rule and we want a formula here. Now it's the same formula as our progress bar, except we want to add one extra thing. If I press F2, then I can comfortably type and move around in this area, in, in this uh, formatting area. So that's really good. So we're going to add, we want H6 to equal in quotes blocked, which is uh, if an item is blocked and put a comma here. And so this is, we're going to add this to the mix. Now we want the H to be, uh, to have a dollar sign, but we want the six not to have a dollar sign because when we're copying it down, we actually want it to move. So if you've got a dollar sign, it won't move. If there's no dollar sign, then it will move. And that's exactly what we want. And just remember, we're going to format this pretty quickly, make it maybe just a, a, a little orange color there. And should we change the borders? I think we're going to change the borders and make those that lighter gray. So I don't forget that one now. Now, if we click OK, I hope I've got all that correct. Let's add our, make sure that it applies to the right area. Remember our entire Gantt chart area. Click apply and <laughs> fantastic, that actually worked. Uh, that's really, really good to see. So again, just making sure that we've got the same uh, formula as the progress formula, but adding in uh, the uh, this cell on the left here equals blocked and making sure you've got a comma and adding it in just like we added it there. And now that's starting to look really, really good. Now we've got one more to do and that is that beautiful complete. If we have an item that's complete, we actually want that to, sh to really you know shine. We want that to be a nice, beautiful yellow color. And to do that, going back into our conditional formatting, always, always back into our conditional formatting, adding a new rule again, so many rules, using a formula to determine which cells to format. And here is the formula that we're going to use, remembering that we want to be the first day of the month. And we do that with this particular format here. So with our formula, we're saying if H6 equals complete, and again, we've got the dollar sign with the H, but no dollar sign with the six, because we want that to copy down. And it equals complete in brackets, because that's a string or a word. And also, if it equals the first day of the month for our end date, then that is what we're going to have. That's going to be our uh, the one that we color. And we can give this a nice fill color. Let's, let's make this perhaps just a, a light, a light yellow. You can make this any color that you like, a golden color or any happy color that, that means that you've completed something great because this is a good, good reason to celebrate. <laughs> make sure that it applies to the right areas, of course, and click apply and fantastic magic, magic. It is starting to work and it's looking really, really good. Oh, now there is one more thing that I forgot and we really want to add this. And that is our today bar or the bar that shows where we are today. So again, we're just going to add another rule, our last rule, I promise, unless you want to add any extra ones yourself, of course. Now we're going to use the today formula. 
So again, remembering it needs to be today, but it needs to be the first day of the month of what today is so that it matches with our calendar. Uh, again, a bit more complicated now so that it looks really, really good in the future and we don't have to worry about it. And here it is, if our uh, calendar day or calendar month equals the first day of the month of today, then we're going to format this. We're going to just change the border and we're going to make our color a nice dark green and a nice solid line. And we're going to put that on the left, click OK and click OK again. Make sure that it applies to the area, our entire Gantt chart area and click apply and magic, magic, we have some beautiful uh, today bar right here so we can always see where we are up to. And I think that actually shows us the complete Gantt chart monthly that you and I have completed together. And this has been just so much fun. I hope you've enjoyed yourself as well. Look at this magical, wonderful thing that we've created together. If you've made it to the end of this video, you should be extremely proud. And again, if you can't create this yourself, don't feel bad. It is very complex. This is some complicated Excel stuff. And if you don't want to spend the time to do it yourself, again, this took me many, many days, weeks, and months to put all of these different templates together, you can pick these up just in the link in the description. There are 50 templates that will save you over a hundred hours of your own work, which is pretty cool. Showcase this one with your boss in your next meeting and they will absolutely love it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.